low fakes right so i've had about five i think it's five late nights out with the stellar 4.5 inch imaging newtonian it doesn't tend to get dark enough to about midnight so they've just been quite quick sessions to about one in the morning so just quick live stacks using an asi air mini before i go into the results i'll just quickly run through the setup i've got here because it's quite an interesting setup so from the ground up we've got an nrl NRL tripod similar to the Stellar tripod. I've borrowed this really nice War Pastron WD17 uh, harmonic drive mount. Everything else I own. This is the only thing borrowed apart from the the Coma Corrector in there. So above that we've got the Stellar 4.5 inch imaging Newtonian. I'm using my ASI 585 camera, which I realise has got a relatively small sensor but I'll explain why I'm still using that in a moment rather than moving on to a bigger sensor cameras. I do have an APS-C size Sony camera that I could have tested, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, the spacing for the coma corrector in there is 75 plus or minus five mils, and I've tried everything from 70 to 79 mil. And uh, underneath, I've got my fairly newly acquired ASI Air Mini, and that's clamped to the beautifully long dovetail on the, the Stellar Lyra. That's really handy to have that length of dovetail because it does enable me to clamp the ASI Air Mini via an Astro Essentials Vixen clamp there. And I've got a William Optics finder, finder shoe there. All the cables, you'll have to excuse the cables, are all very excessively long. It's just what I had at hand. Uh, so this is a Skywatcher 50mm finder that I've used there. Uh, a converter to turn it into a guide scope basically with my ASI 462 camera that's my older camera that works perfectly fine uh, I think that's pretty much it really oh yeah I've got like a Lynx Astro power supply just strapped to the leg as well and just can just got cables dangling everywhere so that's the rig I'll, I'll talk to you now about my experience of using this and the results I've got so far Okay, so of the five nights, I'm presenting three of those nights here. Because the Coma Corrector has a backspacing of 75 plus or minus five mils, I'm presenting here the 75 mil backspacing, 70 mil, and as close as I could get to 80 mil with my spaces, which is 79 millimeters. So we've got the extremes of the range and the, the middle figure here. These three images were captured with the SI Air, they're, they're live stacked images, just a handful of one minute exposures, stacked, guided, so the tracking the tracking's nice and accurate. So the first image is 70 mil backspacing for the coma corrector, and that's of M27. So if we have a closer look there. So on the face of it, if you don't look too closely, everything looks okay-ish, but if we zoom in to 100%. Go and look at the top right corner. We can see there is a bit of coma going on. Oops, zoomed in too much, so let's go to 100. Bottom right corner, coma. Same with the bottom left to a lesser extent. And the same with the top left, but I think that's perhaps the best corner. So if we go back to say 50%. Now if we look at the middle stars, let's zoom right in for this, let's go to 200%. The stars aren't too bad, but you can see a bit of colour fringing, kind of lateral colour fringing, because you've got a bit of red there on that side, and a bit of blue on that side. So this kind of like matches what a few people were saying in the comments on the last video, where the had concerns about this affordable coma corrector because it doesn't have extra low dispersion glass to correct for chromatic aberration it will add a bit of chromatic aberration which is what we're seeing here this is this is with a small si 585 sensor which is quite a bit smaller than the typical aps-c size sensor you get in like a dslr or mirrorless camera if we look at the middle backspacing of 75 millimeters this is the Crescent Nebula. 
It's quite a nice object to image this. So again, on the face of it, if it's an electronic aided astronomy image, it's quite it's quite nice that you can capture data very quickly at f4.4 because the coma corrector's a 1.1 times coma corrector and the telescope's an f4 telescope. So multi multiplying those two things together gives you an f4.4 system, which is still still really fast. So we're getting a lot of data in a very short amount of time. I'll also add that I'm using a Optolong L Pro filter rather than a Nebula filter. I'm not using a dual narrowband filter for this because just a light pollution filter because I don't want the filter to affect the stars that we're looking at too much. So on the face of it, it's not looking too bad. And then if we zoom in to 100%, go and look at the top corners, we've got a bit of coma. Bit of coma in the bottom right, same on the they're looking quite funky on the bottom left, and yeah, not not perfect in the top left either, but not not too bad. But we are using a small sensor again. If we zoom in even further to 200%, which admittedly not many people would look at a picture zoomed in this far unless you're critically analyzing the stars, the stars are quite funky here. You can see they're not. The, just, the shape of the star is just a little bit odd and the chromatic aberration on top of that. So I preferred the stars and the 70 mil backspacing so far. So here is the 79 mil backspacing. Live stat, just a bunch of one minute exposures as I said before. So not done any color tweaking or levels and curves or anything like that to this. And again, if we zoom into 100%, Top right. Now the, the stars are starting to stretch in that direction rather than that direction, which is a sign that the backspacing is too long. Generally, if the stars stretch in that direction, you need to add a bit of distance. And if they're stretching in that direction, you need to reduce the distance. So I think we're a bit long here. Although weirdly, the stars in this corner are going in the direction where it looks like you need to add distance so you know take that with a pinch of salt but the, the general idea is that the stars in the corners aren't very good i think the 70 mil spacing was better and if we zoom right into 200 percent which admittedly is really really zoomed in it's really quite funky stars really so not not great it is a very affordable coma corrector in the scheme of things at £99, roughly the same in dollars and euros. So it's difficult to know what to... Well, it's probably not surprising that it's not amazing. Uh, but obviously, if you've got a critical eye for stars, this isn't going to be for you, I'd say. It's, it's more... It definitely seems to lean more towards small sensor EAA type imaging where maybe you're not quite so fussed about the stars. Anyway, so I, I loaded these images into Aztap, which I'll just quickly show you. If you don't know what Aztap is, it's a free software you can download and you can just open up your image in here. Let's take this one for example. And you can go to Tools, Image Inspection, and you can look at things like the aberration inspector here. So if I go like that, then it will just basically punch right in and just show you like a mosaic of the top left corner, um, top middle, top right, etc. Extreme middle, just really zoomed in. And it will just show you at a glance of what everything looks like rather than having to pan across the whole image. And when we look at the image inspected images, put into ASTAP and looking at the image inspector, the um, the 70 mil backspacing, a um, bit of lateral chromatic aberration in the corners, but generally the stars aren't too bad. Top left's a bit ropey, and um, the middle, sorry, top right's a bit ropey, and so is middle right, but the other corners aren't too bad. A bit of lateral chromatic aberration there. If we look at the, uh, where's the other one? Scroll down. No, here we go. So this is 75 mil backspacing. 
again, you can see a bit of coma top left, top right. Um, again, just every single corner has just got a little bit of chromatic aberration and a bit of stretchy stars again. And finally, with the M51 image, and that's the 79 mil back space, and there isn't actually a lot of stars there to actually examine, but that's how it looks. Now you might might be thinking, well, you know, some of this could be down to tilt. So um, you can also look at tilt in ASTAP as well. So if we look at the 70 mil back spacing, the tilt is 13% mild. So we've got 8.7 in the top left, 9.4 top right, 9.7 9 bottom right, 9.9 .9 effectively bottom left, and We've got 75 mil, so this is the Crescent Nebula. And again, it's mild 14% tilt. So it's basically from nine points something in most corners and you know med medium high eights in the top corner. And finally, the one with fewer stars, that's very mild as well, 12%. It's nine something, nine something, nine something, and just over 10. So Tilt is quite mild and focus, to focus, I have live captured my screen whilst using the SI Air and you can see I'm, I'm using the focus tool to zoom right in on the stars and get them as small as possible. I managed to get them not, not that small really, just about 4.8 arc seconds but that's just to show you how I focused. And if I zoom through all this procedure that I did, I did start off trying to capture M106, I think. And then I switched, it was a bit low down. So I just, it was a bit murky where that was. So I thought I'd go a bit higher and grab M51. But if you look at the guide graph, whoop, let's get past that. If you look at the guide graph, it's pretty good. It's like around 0.5 arc seconds, which is, you know, those stars aren't drifting. So I think I've looked at most things with this smaller size sensor and concluded that I can't really, oh yeah, before, yeah, collimation is probably something I should touch upon. So I capture this defocus star, if I zoom right in. Now I actually got a ruler on the screen and measured from there to there, there to there and there to there and it was all the same distance. So I think that's fairly well collimated. And this is how it was out the box. So I was quite impressed because fast F4 Newtonians, they're not very good at staying collimated a lot of the time, but I think the upgrades to this one have definitely helped keep it quite stable. The, the carbon fiber tube, the, um, the flush Allen key adjustments on the cell, not just protruding knobs that could get knocked. And the, although that was quite a bit annoying in the field, because I did think about having a look at collimation before, you know, I realized it was fine. And I was like, oh, I've got to dig around for the right size Allen keys. So knobs are more convenient, but at the same time, having it all flush and just flush Allen bolts, it's less likely to get knocked out, even, even bearing in mind you've got locking screws. And the, the CNC machine uh, spider vanes as well, just the whole thing's nice and rigid and firmly stable and and this was exactly how it arrived from the factory so after a lot of traveling as well so i think i've ruled out most things like you know excessive tilt problems with focus problems with guiding and you know tracking and problems of collimation and i've looked at a a good sample of the backspacing, which is 75 plus or minus five mil. So I've gone to those extremes either side to check it. I think the, the 70 mil is the best of the bunch, but still not quite perfect in the corners. So I wouldn't like to go up to a bigger size sensor because that's only going to get worse as it goes out. But I think we've concluded that the coma corrector, the affordable Stellar coma corrector isn't going to be a good match if you're using a larger sensor or if you're or you're going to be pixel peeping at the stars but for things like EAA it, it seems like it captures objects very quickly like I'm getting you know 
fully realized images of objects with very little data, like 20 minutes of data and I'm getting a reasonable image up. These are just light frames, no darks, bias or, or flats or anything like that. Just quick EAA live stacked images. So for that kind of thing, I think it works really well actually. And because uh, that f4.4 focal ratio is just going to be sucking in the light for its given focal length. It's capturing a lot of light for its given focal length. But for hot, what I'd call hardcore critical astrophotography, I don't think this setup is right at the moment for that. It's more of a budget friendly astrograph because both the the telescope and the coma corrector add up to less than 400 pounds. So I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised given the price point and how fast the system is. But I just want to, obviously people have been waiting for to hear how this has been going. I didn't want to report back too quickly without doing really quite extensive testing because I don't want to make any mistakes with this. So I've left it a couple of weeks, enough time for me to capture those five nights and come up with this. And I think I've, I think I've concluded that for critical astrophotography, it does need a bit of work. Um, it's not really suitable with that affordable Stellar LIRA coma corrector. But for visual with eyepieces, it reaches focus fine with both 1.25 inch and 2 inch eyepieces. And for EAA, I think it's all right for that. But anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens with this and I'll let you know if there's any developments at all. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it there, I think, and uh, get, get on with the weekend, get on with the chores. Cool. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you guys and girls in the next video. Bye for now.